Manhandling, the aggressive bums, the defecators, the urinators, the ones who curse you if you don't give them money. I almost have never seen an illegal alien, ever. They're all uh, our own. They're all citizens of this country. So why are the illegal aliens not in the streets? Because they're well taken care of. By the way, I, I talk about this at length in my forthcoming book, Government Zero. I have to mention it because I tried to make my books different than most. My books are not Democrat, Republican, Republican, Democrat, Democrat, Republican, and George Washington's false teeth. Government Zero covers this issue very, very clearly, and you can only find it online right now for an advanced copy. But let's go back to the issue itself. Let's go to the callers. Michael W. M. A. L. in Washington, D.C. What's on your mind? How would you solve the problem of the bums in the streets? Well, this problem was brought up a few thousand years ago. Somebody uh, by the name of Turnus Rufus, a Russia, a very wicked Roman king, uh, Caesar, asked uh, one of the, the great rabbis, if God really... Well, again, we're going to go to the Bible. Would you stop already with the Bible? How would you solve the problem of the bums in the streets? That's what I'm talking about. He said, uh, he asked, why, if God really loves the poor, why doesn't he himself support them? Isn't that a question right up your alley, Michael? And the answer is, the rabbi told him, so there should be <sighs> kindness in the world, so that we shall act kindly toward these people. Well, that's right. So the way to act kindly is to take them out of the filth in which they are living and put them in a mental care facility where they are cared for. Wouldn't that be kind? That's false. Because what happened was... Wait, sir, yes or no, would that not be kind to get them out of their own fecal matter and urine and put them in a place where they can be cared for? What is unkind about that? That would be cruel because the problem with de which happened back in the time you're talking about and the effort to have normalization, was that there were many people who didn't belong there in the psychiatric... Uh, please, you know, you're getting off the track just to try to sound very smart to your rabbinical uh, students that are sitting there looking at you eating sponge cake. But you're not solving the problem. What would you do to solve the problem? What we need to do is something that relates to... A Again, no answer. Can't you ever answer anything without sounding like a rabbi who has nothing to do all day but talk? Give me an answer. Ten seconds or less. The answer is to pass it forward. The answer is what? To pass kindness forward so that everybody acts in a way that they love their fellow. You're not giving a solution. You're giving nonsense that you would talk to children in a seminary. Well, we need I want practical answers. What would you do with the bum problem? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, We're talking about the scourge of the bums in the streets of America caused by liberalism back in the 60s when psychiatrists and politicians said that there are too many people in mental hospitals, we got to release them in their snake pits. By 84, it was out of control, and they admitted they made a mistake, and now it's only gotten worse because it's become an industry unto itself with many, many people making fortunes off the bums, including politicians who get the kickbacks running right up to the top. The VIG runs right up into the hands of Congress itself, as you can well imagine. That's how a corrupt nation functions. Now, when I come back, I'll take your answers to this homeless bum problem, which has reached a point of no return in San Francisco. I will also talk about the predictions made in the Bible about the coming global economic collapse, which I talked with you about a month ago. Shemitah, do you remember it? What's coming up in the seven-year cycle on September 13, 2015, the day before Rosh Hashanah? Well, pay close attention. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You're going to San Francisco, bring a raincoat on your back. And uh, while you're at it, bring a bulletproof nest, uh, a vest, <laughs> bulletproof nest. That's funny. What's not funny is the uh, plague of crime and filth in the streets of San Francisco. We've known that the money's been stolen for the highways. That's why the streets are not fixed. We know they steal the federal highway money. That's why we've been calling for a, an FBI task force to enter the city and take down the, the corruption, which I thought was going to happen a few weeks ago. But no, nothing came of that one. Then Kate Steinle was shot by an illegal alien uh, with a gun he claims he found, which we know that's the latest excuse the lawyers invent. He shot her in cold blood, probably as a gang initiation. And now yesterday, tourists on Lombard Street were held up by two prize citizens from Oakland who uh, stole his camera. The Thai tourists ran after them. They shot him. And it goes on and on. So we're asking, how do we solve the problem? So we focused in the first hour on the the bums and I asked you how to solve the problem everyone agrees I'll reopen the mental hospitals which were closed unfortunately by Governor Brown's father Pat Brown he wrote the law and uh, Governor Ronald Reagan had to follow the law and he closed the hospitals and put the bums on the streets and ever since then there's been a whole industry around uh, the false compassionate note that they don't belong in hospitals we got to give them food and put them in give them houses and this it's never worked it continues to attract more and more of the bums of the world. Now, what's interesting is that while we've been talking about this, I told you that I observed something that I've not read anywhere, which is typical of the savage nation. I observed that amongst the, quote, homeless population in San Francisco, I almost never, ever see an illegal alien. It's very interesting. And that is because most of the uh, social service money is being sucked up into the illegal alien community, Mr. Ramos. Most of the money that was designated by the taxpayers to go to the downtrodden is being sucked up by the illegal alien community. And so more and more of our uh, citizens are falling into the gutters without any care. That's another byproduct, Mr. Trump, of the illegal alien influx into America. That should come up in the next set of debates uh, if this comes up at all. So I want to talk about that, but I also mentioned that I would talk about the biblical prophecies that I read to you a while ago called the Shemitah. And I don't want to, I don't want to tell you that I believe this is 100% true, but I told you that there was scripture about this, about the Sabbath years. And the Sabbath years were very important. In the Bible, the people of Israel were commanded to let the land lie fallow every seven years. And during the seventh year, there would be no sowing and no reaping. And God took this very seriously. And he took it seriously because he wanted the land to recover its health, just as people need a sabbatical, which is why we usually don't work on Sunday. Most of us uh, understand that. But this, the failure to observe these Sabbath years was one of the main reasons cited in the scriptures for why the Jewish people were punished by God and exiled to Babylon in 586 B.C. Okay, that, put that aside, because many of you are cynics. On the last day of the Shemitah year, the people of Israel were, were instructed to perform a releasing of debts. And so let's look at what happened at the end of Shemitah years, going back to 1931. In 1931, a solar eclipse took place on September 12th, the end of a Shemitah year. Eight days later, England abandoned the gold standard, setting off market crashes and bank failures around the world. It also ushered in the, the month-long stock market percentage crash, the biggest one in Wall Street history, 1931. In 1987, a solar eclipse took place September 23rd, again, again at the end of a Shemitah year. Less than 30 days later came Black Monday, the greatest percentage crash in Wall Street history. In 1994, a bond market massacre was, was seen. It's remembered with horror by those who lived through it. Yields on 30-year treasuries jumped some 200 basis points in the first nine months of the year, hammering investors and financial firms, not to mention thrusting Mexico into crisis and bankrupting Orange County. On 9-11, September 11, 2001, planes were flown into the World Trade Center towers by Muslims from Saudi Arabia. 
President Bush shut down the banks for six days. They were closed on the day before Rosh Hashanah, September 16th, 2001. But they reopened the next day on Rosh Hashanah, September 17th, 2001. And the stock market then dropped more than 700 points. That large decline in the stock market happened on Rosh Hashanah in 2001, which was the beginning of the next seven-year cycle. Just follow me. There's only two more of these. Seven years later, on September 29th, 2008, the day before Rosh Hashanah, that's the Jewish New Year, by the way, September 30th, 2008, the stock market dropped 777 points. That was the largest one-day decline in the history of the market, and it triggered the current Great Recession. This again happened on the day before Rosh Hashanah, 2008. Pay attention now. The current seven-year cycle will end on September 13th, 2015, the day before Rosh Hashanah. What is going to happen? Well, we don't know. I'm alerting you to the trend. This was put together by a man named Jonathan Kahn. He is not predicting an economic collapse on, on September 13th, 2015, but he is alerting the world to this trend going back in time. This information is very important given what happened in the stock markets in America over the last few days. 855-400-7282. Now let's go back to the other prophecies that Michael Savage has made, the prophecies of the homeless, for example. Why are there so many homeless in America? Are they all mentally ill? Are they all criminals? No, not by any means are they all mentally ill and homeless. We understand there are people who are just down in their luck. But the question is, how do we solve the problem? Billions of dollars have been thrown at the problem with no, no, no solution, because that's what liberals do. They throw money at a problem, and they don't solve the problem. What would you do? I'd like to hear from homeless people themselves. It's interesting, by the way, open up some lines uh, to, to this, uh, would you, Mr. Call Screener? Please let go some of the calls that are repetitive. Here's a homeless gentleman from San Francisco. Jim on line two. Go ahead. You're homeless. How would you solve the homeless problem? Jim, line two, are you there? Okay. Go I'm ahead. You're on. The, no, all yeah. right. I don't well, my call screening that. equipment is not working, but go ahead. Line two. Okay, that's fine. All right. So here's what's happening. The, the government, I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not working. I haven't worked since the Obama administration. I'm a printer by trade. My industry's wiped out. I'm going to be 60 years old, okay? I have no support from the government. I don't want any. What I want them to do is leave me alone. I'm in a little warehouse, a 10 by 10, that I have $100 a month that I have to pay for it, okay? And what the government's doing right now is they're trying to scatter us out and put us on the street to control us. I know that's not the answer, but if they could give us housing, and I say could, I don't want anything from the government. And very okay. So you're you're exactly you're exactly the opposite of what we're talking about. You're not a criminal. You're not mentally ill. You're just out of work, and you don't know what to do. House. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I'm I'm saying. So what would you? Why can't you go to a smaller town and take a job somewhere? There's okay. I could go to a smaller job. I, I, I know this sounds like a cop out. I, I could I could go where? I'm in South Florida. The bus the system is great. Okay, it's very good. Four dollars a day. I don't have. I went down for the health insurance in this town. Okay, you know where they told me to go? This first of all, I was told to go to Little House, which I never heard of. Then they told me to go. The people in the government are telling me you got to go down under the big tree, and then they'll say that I'm homeless so I can get health insurance. I mean, we, we are in bad times. You're, you're about the Bible. Don't get, I'm really nutty about this. I, I understand there's a lot of people down and out. The government, or nobody has work down here. In Florida, I don't care what they tell you in the market. No, it's a Why, wait, wait, hold it now. Answer this question. You're, you're an American citizen. Amongst the people who you claim, who you see as homeless, do you see any illegal aliens? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and, where, and where are they from? What country are they from? Andorras, Mexico, uh, and, and, and I can't, I, I, if you want, if you have time, I can tell you. I went to Gordon. Well, no, because I don't see them in the streets of San Francisco. They're very well taken care of here. Well, here they're they seem to. They get loads of social services if they come here illegally from Mexico. That we know. There's tons of people waiting to help them. There are entire industries of people who help the illegal aliens from Mexico. Uh, but I'm saying people like you don't seem to get the care, but you're saying that I'm wrong. You're saying that you see a lot of illegal aliens in your uh, homeless shelters, right? I don't go to the shelters. I don't want to have anything to do with my government. I'm All right, so, but where where are you seeing these people that you claim you see? Where are they? 
where I live. I'm in a warehouse, buddy. And, you know, strings of warehouses. It's illegal for me to do what I'm doing. And